Hey, what's going on, chess lovers? This is Maurice Bishop Chess. So y'all know my slogan, life is a game of chess. Uh, if y'all watching, you know, this is uh, how I beat a grandmaster in three-minute blitz. Um, hopefully y'all can see my thing here. All right. Okay. I was make, trying to make it a little bit bigger my screen or my camera. Yeah, it's crazy because I'm just now figuring this out that I can do this like randomly like this. It's crazy. All right, maybe I can do it where uh, I guess not. All right, guys, so the reason why I'm doing this because uh, a lot of people, they always ask me questions, you know, about, um, you know, playing title players and, you know, things like that. And, you know, obviously, guys, uh, I'd rather, you know, play on the board, you know, playing tournaments. And I, I really want to get my title, uh, my title or my master title, you know, that way things like that. But because of this whole pandemic, you know, obviously we use the online thing, you know, that's what we do. But anyway, guys, uh, I want to actually share with y'all um, a game. I'm actually going to share with y'all a game that I actually um, lost uh, first. Uh, I definitely want to show that to y'all first. Uh, hold on, guys. I'm over trying to figure out make sure okay so everything is good yeah i just want to make sure all this was um, good on my end all right so all right so i'm, I'm gonna show you the game that i lost first and, and the reason i want to show y'all this because again i want to show y'all that i'm still human like i still you know i lose or whatever and there's types that I, I may make mistakes and things like that but just because you lose you know to a high rated player or you know title player whatever the case is you know, you want to bounce back. Never have that thing or never have that doubt in your mind that you can't um, win, you know, or or never have that doubt in your mind that you can't be a high rated player or somebody that just in generally uh, stronger than you. You know, you want to shake that off, you know, learn from your mistakes and then play again. So obviously, guys, I played as um, white and obviously you played as black. Uh, I play E4. Uh, obviously, the and just gonna always say I'm wrong uh, when I do gambits. Um, B4, E6, and um, I take, I go D4, Bishop E6, I go C3, and he goes D5, and I go E5, uh, which is what I did. Um, knight E7, Knight F3, Knight D7, Bishop D3. And notice guys, um, these lines, you know, I play this all the time. I've been playing it for a long time, so, you know, like I said, I, I I do a thorough analysis with a lot of stuff that I do. So uh, again, this 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 took years. This wasn't like months, but this took years for me to uh, try to master. So uh, so don't feel bad if you feel like you can't remember. If if you make it a daily habit, you know, studying and, and, and analyzing your games, you know, you'll try to prevent from um, from making the mis the same mistakes twice. All right, so F6, uh, he played, uh, I didn't go, and I know about this, and it's not like I don't know about it, and I know, and I know, so they say you're supposed to take um, the pawn, um, you know, with E catches F6. Uh, I didn't play that, um, I, I did H4. Um, he took, and I go D catches E5. Obviously, I guess I was supposed to go Knight G5 first, and then go Knight catches E6. Um, I mean, these, that's how I uh, usually was always playing, but uh, he did kind of play it a little bit. Uh, I don't know, but I, I was playing like how I was used to playing, but I just took, he goes there uh, attacking my light square bishop. Uh, and the reason why I wanted to take back with the pawn, because again, I wanted to control these d6 square, because eventually I want to go knight a3, knight b5, and then knight d6. And that's usually how I always uh, strategize uh, my games that way. You know, I always do it that way. Um, hold on, I think I got some 
Okay, no. So, hey, what's up? Uh, I can never say your name right. Um, Renan. Hope I'm saying it right. <laughs> but yeah, guys. Uh, but that was the whole point of having this point on E5. Uh, knight A3, knight B5, and then knight D6 with a knight on a nice post. So that was the whole point. Uh, Bishop C2, knight E4. Uh, and then, guys, this was a little bit different because I've never, never had nobody play knight E4 on me. You know, never like this is like crazy. Like, uh, I was kind of stuck on this position because you know, I mean, yeah, I, I could castle, but with this knight on e4, it's very annoying. And the fact that I can't go knight d2 because of knight catcher c3, so I forced the go bishop catches e4, uh, d catches e4, and that was one of my mistakes. Uh, I, uh, obviously, the end of session, I went queen catchers d8. And maybe go knight g5. Uh, but instead, I go queen a4 check, which um, the engine said this was wrong for me. Uh, bishop d7, queen catches e4. Uh, and the reason why I did that, I mean, it wasn't just me just trying to uh, take the pawns, guys. Uh, I just wanted to get the pawn out the way because I thought that maybe he can use it as uh, a weapon for me, which is why I took the pawn um, that way. But I think by me doing this, this does give him some counterplay. Uh, he does have two bishops uh, aiming at my direction, you know? So I go queen g4. And I think the best move, uh, in my opinion, probably should have been queen c4, maybe. Um, instead, I go queen g4, and then he goes queen d3. So I was like, okay. Uh, I go knight d4. Again, guys, I can't go queen catchers um, e6. Uh, this is kind of this is this is um pretty scary to uh, play though um, probably because of this move um, bishop b5 which is what I was looking at and I couldn't really figure out what I can honestly do to actually stop that uh, at all because uh, this mate is just powerful so that's why um, when he did queen d3 I just went knight d4 so I figured if I go knight d4 I could at least try to cover the you know, the B5 square. But even if he does take, which is what he did, uh, I took back. But now, uh, if he did try something like queen B3, I could just go back to queen D1, you know, so to prevent him from mating me. Uh, knight F5, I don't know why they gave uh, him a check mark because I thought that was actually a really good move, uh, in my opinion. Uh, yeah, so uh, I go rook H3. Um, I felt again, guys. I felt like I was stuck. I I, I felt like um, in this position, you know, I, I felt like I was really stuck in this position right now. You know, like uh, Bishop um, B two. Um, I didn't really like that move. Um, Bishop B two. Uh, I mean, Castle and Queenside. I feel like he gets um, some play here, and then the king is kind of safe. You know. I needed something. So I was willing just to sacrifice the pawn just to get some type of counterplay. So I go rook h3, he takes, and I go queen catcher d4. I felt like that was forced because he was hitting my rook, as you can see. So rook c3, bishop catcher g2. Like I'm dropping pawns and stuff. Like I'm like crazy, but I go bishop a3. Uh, the crazy part, guys, on the move that I should have played was knight a3. Uh, which would have been a better move. So at least if he does go bishop catcher g2, I have rook g3 and then hitting uh, the pawn on g7. Um, obviously, guys, it's not every day that I play a, a GM. You know, it's not every day I play a GM. You know, I don't play it all the time. I play more FIDE, FIDE Masters and International Masters a lot. I play a lot of International Masters now, but the Grand Masters, you know, I rarely, um, I don't play that often. Uh, but it, it was just crazy, guys. Uh, but rook c3, bishop catcher g2, bishop a3, preventing him from castling. Um, bishop c6, I go bishop c5. And the whole point of bishop c5, guys, is uh, I wanted to get this knight off of the, the center of the square. Now, there is a principle uh, when you're playing in the end game. If you could centralize um, your minor pieces, you know, it, it does become very strong. Uh, it can give you uh, some opportunities. Um, he goes knight f3, and then I just go king e2. 
night catchers age four. Again, guys, I'm just, I don't know. This wasn't my best game at all. This was not my best game, but you know, again, in, in, in spite of, in spite of, in spite of it all, you know, I still had that mindset of not giving up and just playing as hard as I possibly can, like survival. So I go night D2. Uh, night at five, I go night C4. I'm already uh, getting ready to hit night D6. Uh, H5, King F1, because I have to go King F1 because this pass point is pretty deadly, especially with this light square bishop guarding that square. So guys, so lesson learned. Anytime you, your opponent uh, has a pawn on outside pass point, uh, you need to really pay attention to that because it's very, very dangerous. That's something you don't want to overlook, which is why I went straight to King F1. He marched down. I go King G1. Uh, he goes Rook H6, in which I thought he was going to go G5, but he didn't. But I just go Rook um, King H2. Rook G6. I go Rook D1. Um, B6. And I go Knight D6. Uh, he takes. I take with the Rook. Now, I'm going to tell you why I did this. Uh, I go Rook captures uh, D6 now. Yeah, so I, I take with rook catcher d6. Now the whole point of this is if he takes, I could take back with the um, with the rook, and then also this c pawn is weak, and then I could take this. So my end game would be pretty nice. Uh, I won't be you know so terribly bad uh, in this position at all. So, and that was the whole point. So, so when I go rook catcher d6, he already knew about it. So he goes bishop d5. So bishop b3, rook d8, um, I take, and then I go rook a, uh, a3, because I'm thinking I'm doing pretty good right now. Uh, I feel like there's no way he could defend against these pawns. So he goes rook g2, I go king h3, uh, g5, and I go rook catchers a7. By this time, guys, I'm kind of low on time. Uh, he has a little bit more time than I do. Um, yeah, he goes rook g1, and I go bishop catcher b6 check. You know, I just try to move as fast as possible because I, I didn't want my time to go down. So as you can see here, I'm at 16 seconds. He had 19 seconds, uh, which is something I should have did. I should have went rook a3. Um, I didn't. I went a3, which is the worst move that I could have did because after bishop f3, uh, there's really no way I could stop uh, this mate at all. Like, literally, no way. Um, yeah, it was nothing that I could really do. That's Which is why I just go bishop c5, and then he checks make me uh, just like this. All right? So, and that's pretty much what he did. So, that was the first game, guys, you know, that he got me. But, again, guys, um, you lose a game, don't give up. Like, don't, like, you keep pushing, you keep trying, you know, uh, learn from it, analyze the game first see where you went wrong, and then go from there. Now, it's going to be a shock. So in this game, I actually won. I actually won um, this game. Uh, I was surprised he played me uh, the amount of times that he played me, though. Uh, but I definitely uh, – I, I actually was in the league because I got more wins out of him than he beat me because I think he only beat me, um, I want to say, twice. I want to say twice, but I beat him like, I think like four times, but plus we had a draw as well. So, but this is going to be a quick one right here, guys. Uh, so in this game, uh, he played white, I played black. So he goes D4 and I hit him with the uh, my secret weapon opening for black. Uh, guys, you would, again, if you're not part of the Maurice uh, Bishop Chess University, you need to get on that because uh, I'm, I'm telling you guys, every time I play this, e even I uh, got him uh, messed up with this uh, game here, uh, <laughs> which is pretty crazy. Uh, a GL, no. He fell for my secret weapon opening for black. Uh, I go D6, knight at three, bishop G4. He takes, bishop captures D6, knight C3, and I go queen E7. This seems to always get people every single time because they they kind of I know understand like the L shot that that's another opening where people think oh you're a beginner player you don't know what you're doing but then when I play moves like Queen E seven they're like man what the heck is he doing so I'm pretty sure uh, he probably didn't even know uh, this type of opening at all uh, which is why this game ended pretty quickly this 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 was way quicker than the first game.
So Bishop G5, of course, guys, I go F6. Um, this is stuff that you'll find in my university course. Uh, Bishop H4, I go Knight C6. Uh, Queen D3, which I don't know why, but a lot, I get a lot of high-rated players play Queen D3 a lot. I do not know why. I mean, I, I do know why, because they want to cast the queen side. But I get a lot of high-rated players play this all the time, Queen D3. I don't know why, but they do. But I hit them with the move, um, Queenside Castle. Uh, you know, I have that D file now. The rook is hitting the queen, right? But obviously the bishop is in front. Uh, queen C4, which he does another odd move, Queen C4, which I could tell already that he doesn't know this type of opening. And, you know, when, when your opponent don't know this type of opening, you know, they'll fall for a lot of things, a lot of tricks. Uh, which is why I go bishop e6, harassing the queen, um, queen a4, and then that's when I hit him with bishop e4. The beauty about this opening here is um, with bishop e4, this knight is pinned, you know, and you have this nice, powerful uh, d file that's on your way. So again, guys, when I talk about showing my secret weapon opening for black, like I don't just play this opening just because it looks nice. I play this opening because it is aggressive. A lot of people don't know this opening. You will not find this opening in Google. You won't find this opening in articles. Yes, you may find an article about the Dust Gambit, but the Dust Gambit or the England Gambit, however y'all want to say it, it is not in the same formation as the stuff that I play now. You will not find none of this stuff and no articles or anything else. You'll only find this obviously on his channel, guys, and obviously in the Maurice Bishop Chess University, and where's that really go in depth uh, with that, all right? So this should be four, right? Uh, he goes A3, and which, yo, he, he fell for it. This is the thing that a lot of title players, they fall for this every single time, guys, and I don't know how many times, uh, but I was... I ain't gonna say I'm surprised that a GM fell for it, but you know, it was um I was y'all could just imagine I was smiling from ear to ear, you know, when uh he made this mistake. Uh so I immediately went bishop capture c3. Um he takes and then I go queen c5. Um the whole purpose of queen c5, guys, as y'all can see, I'm threatening queen capture c3 checkmate. Obviously, guys, uh, that that is a threat. Um it's not really too much. Uh, it's not too many things you could really do uh, in this type of position right here. So the GM actually plays C4. You know, obviously, guys, he had to play this to prevent me from getting to this C3 square, just the C3 square alone, right? He plays C4. Uh, G5 um, is what I play. But the whole point of G5, guys, uh, you're probably thinking I go G5 just to chase the, the bishop away. But no, this whole point of this G5 move is literally to target the knight on F3. That is the whole reason for this G5 push. It, it comes off as I'm just attacking the bishop, but that's not the case. The whole case is to target the knight. And you're about to see why I target the knight. And this, is, this game is pretty much uh, almost over. Uh, so bishop G3, uh, after he goes bishop G3, uh, I hit him with G4. And of course, as y'all can see, the engine is telling White that he needs to go E3 because obviously any other move is, is just losing. You know, uh, it's just pretty bad, right? So after the move G4, uh, my opponent goes Queen B5. Uh, so he actually missed the uh, E3 move. But again, the, the position still lose either way, uh, which is why uh, I just had a big, a big advantage in this game. So as y'all can see, uh, in this position. Oh, <laughs> hey, thanks. Um, yo, man, thanks, uh, Mooney, man, for real. I just said your last name. <laughs> My bad, man. Uh, yeah, but uh, with this one, the uh, the Queen B5, uh, I kind of just gave y'all, y'all probably saw the answers already. I need to cover it, though, but y'all probably saw it already. But yeah, guys, this was a blunder on this part, uh, Queen B5. So notice, guys, as you see, like I told you before, I wanted to get to the C3 uh, checkmate to try to mate him and stuff, which is why he goes C4 a point. And then by me hitting the G4 point, um, I wanted to go knight D4. But he tries to exchange the queen first because, you know, 
I'm, I'm going to show you what it looks like. If I take this queen, right? Yes, I am attacking a knight, but I got to take the queen first. But if he uh, takes my uh, queen, then now it doesn't really matter what I do now because now this knight is safe. So if I decide to take his knight, then he could take my knight. And that's pretty much it. Obviously, guys, this is not what I want, right? This is not what I want. So I shocked them with a surprising move, guys. The surprising move. Uh, the surprising move here is knight d4, guys. Knight d4, yes. That is the move, knight d4. Why, why is this the move? Because, guys, if queen captures uh, c5, then knight captures c2 is checkmate. That is the move. And, yes, uh, with, after this knight d4 move, uh, he, uh, he actually resigned in his position. He resigned. Yeah, so after knight d4, what are you going to do? Uh, if you go knight captures on uh, d4, then you get hit with queen captures on um, d4. So now I'm hitting the rook, but also I'm threatening mate here. So it's not like you could go rook d1 because I'll take this automatically. It'll just be a, a, a mate here. Uh, unless the only thing you could literally do is go f3, but I mean, this is just a no brainer. Like this doesn't, this is just not going to win at all. <laughs> this is just not going to uh, cut it, you know? But yeah, he he resigned in this one. All right, so that's that's um game. This is the second game, so I beat him. So then I played on the second time. All right, so I played black. He played white. Um, uh, so d four e five. So I played this again. Uh, he takes. Uh, bishop g four. He takes. Bishop catches d six. G three. Um, queen e seven. Bishop g two, and then knight c six. Now, I, I'm going I'm to I'm wait until I get to this position because I, I definitely want to talk about something, though, because I know a lot of people talk about it. Uh, he castles king side, I castle queen side, he goes knight d2, and then I hit him with h5. So now in this position, I know a lot of people be thinking like, yo, man, this kind of mixed with like an L shot in a way. Um, kind of, but not really. Uh, and the reason why I say this is because the L shot almost come up as a, a, almost like a closed position. In this opening right here, it's more open. It's more aggressive. You know, it's almost like the a all out brawl. Whereas, you know, the L shot, I, I like to describe the L shot as like a wrestling move or like wrestling, jujitsu, things like that. It's kind of closed and you got to look for techniques inside of a closed position. Whereas L shot is, is literally like a straight, brawl you know like a straight boxing you know ain't too much grappling and all that you know it's like all out in the open you're in a ring this is what this uh, opening is which is why it's so aggressive which is why i play it uh yeah guys <laughs> so yeah i go h5 he goes c3 and i immediately go h4 h4 automatically guys uh the whole point of h4 guys is if he goes knight captures h4 i'll just go rook catches h4 and then if he takes then i get the move queen captures h4 obviously i'm threatening checkmate here um if he tries to go somewhere like f4 uh he get hit with the bishop c5 check uh obviously you don't want to go rook f2 because obviously this is just not going to help you at all uh with this move queen captures and then Bishop captures um, uh, e2, and you could just imagine how strong this um, uh, this opening is because, as you can see, uh, the queen can't even go g1 because of queen captures g1 is checkmate. You know, uh, it's nowhere for this queen to go except for go uh, queen c2, b3, or a4. But of course, he'll still get checkmated with g1. So this is just um, some crazy, crazy. Um, things here guys <laughs> very very crazy all right so and, and again guys this is something that i just made up this is something that i just um start playing with you know start you know playing around with it you know it got me some good positions so this is why i like so um but yeah obviously guys he doesn't he doesn't um take obviously uh h4 uh, he goes uh, queen a4, and then I go knight f6. Um, he goes knight d4, and of course, guys, I'm forced to actually take uh, due to the fact that, you know, if I decide to take this pawn, uh, this it's not really good because now he's hitting my queen. 
Uh, if I do take, uh, he, he, he gets this move. And you're kind of giving him a lot of activity, and that's not what you want to do. And then if you come here, then, yeah, this is um, nasty because now uh, I'm about to be mated. Even if I do come bishop c8, he gets the move queen b5 uh, check. And then the only thing I could do was go bishop b7, and this is checkmate. So, yeah, so which is why I had to, after this knight d4 move, I have to take this uh, knight away. Uh, which is what I did. Um, my bad. Let me go back. So yeah. So I go knight captures d4, uh, c captures d4, and then h captures g3. Um, after he takes, uh, I go bishop h3. Uh, I wanted to exchange the light square bishop to alleviate the pressure on his b7 square. But also I wanted to create some light square weaknesses as well, which is another reason why I did this. Uh, but he goes bishop f3, and the reason why he goes bishop f3 because he wants to keep. I know, I got you. Yeah, but I go bishop, or he goes bishop f3 because he wants to uh, keep the light square bishop. He wants to keep the pressure on his um, b7 square, and eventually he would like to go queen captures a7, where he could try to threat some mates, which is the whole point of it, right? So. Uh, so what do I do? I go bishop capture g3, guys. Yes, I go bishop capture g3. And this sacrifice would not have worked if this knight on d2 or if this knight wasn't on d2. Uh, and the reason why I say this is because um, by him taking, you know, it, it gives me this um, this weak square that I would like to go to, which is the e3 square, uh, which is what I wanted to do. Uh, but um, he actually goes queen captures a7, which was um, the wrong move to do because um, now I just hit him with bishop h2 check. Um, he actually takes and then I go knight d5. Now, the whole point of knight d5 is to prevent uh, the queen from hitting the um, b7 square, but also, um, you know, if, if he does, does something like bishop captures. Um, d5 or something like that. I do have the move um, queen d6 check, uh, which could actually work. Um, if he goes um, king g1, uh, I have queen captures d5. And then I could like switch it off to queen g5 if I want to, or threat the bishop captures uh, of the rook on f1. It's just a lot, a lot of things that um, I could do in this position. So after knight d5, he goes knight e4, um, bishop f5 check, um, king g1, and I automatically take his knight off. And you could just imagine that um, this game is pretty much over. Um, bishop captures um, e4, queen captures e4. And um, after f3, uh, I just go queen h4. And it's really nothing that he can really do. So even after this check, I go king d7. And... Um, did he lose on time? Oh, he actually lost on time, but uh, but as you can see in this position, it's nothing that he could really do because I'm threatening to check me, and it's nothing that he could do to uh, stop that anyway, you know? So pretty, pretty um, crazy here, guys. Pretty, pretty crazy. Uh, and yeah, guys, so I, so let's go, let's see. Uh, so I did lose this game, but only lost um, due to time. I lost on time. Um, yeah, guys, I actually lost on time uh, for this one. Actually, I'm, show, I'm not going to go through the whole game because y'all kind of see the openings that I play. Um, I was kind of – I wasn't mad, but, you know, I was like – I mean – I'm not too mad because, you know, like I said, I, I pretty much beat him more than he beat me. So, which is why uh, I like. But um, Rook catches D4, Knight F3, and I went Rook D8. Uh, I, almost, I almost made a mistake and did this move, but I figured that uh, after E catches F6, this is uh, not the best move because he gets that Knight. So, which is why I went Rook D8. Um, bishop captures, G captures F4, uh, Rook uh, D1, and I go Knight D5, Queen D5, C6, Rook C1. I move, I move out the way because um, he was threatening uh, Rook captures D5, and I can't take back because uh, the Rook pinning his pawn. So that's why I move the King over. A3, G8, 
B4, A6, Knight D4, G5, he takes, and I take here. Yeah, so, yeah, so after this, I, I pretty much um, lost on time here, uh, which was pretty crazy, and I was winning, but <laughs> pretty crazy, guys. But, yeah, uh, so, but the whole point that I, I wanted to make here, guys, is um, – the, re the reason why I wanted to show y'all this game, because yes, I lost the first time uh, to a GM. It's not every day I play a GM, but, you know, don't beat yourself over the head. Uh, a lot of times, guys, it may take, you may have to get beat a hundred times in order for you to get stronger. You know, always remember that you may have to get beat a hundred times in order for you to get stronger, you know, so that you can learn from your mistakes, uh, analyze your game. And then at the end of the day, it's going to really depend on you, you know, how ambitious you are to wanting to get better in, the, in this game, you know, how ambitious you are, how determined you are um, to get better, you know, so you got to look at it that way, you know, always look at every defeat as a positive, you know, kind of like math guys, a negative, a negative equal a positive, <laughs> a negative, negative always equals a positive. So always think of, you know, the positive, you know, um, and like I said, if all y'all is in my Maurice Bishop Test University, y'all already know, you know, when y'all lose a game, you know, y'all send me the games and we go over it, you know, to help you get better. And that, that's what we do. This, this, is, this is all about accountability, guys. Accountability, 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 you know. And, and, and like I've always been saying, it's not just me giving y'all or helping y'all analyze y'all games, but also y'all have each other, you know, to help each other out you know, as one and start helping each other analyze games and things like that. Because there were plenty of times when I was playing in tournaments and stuff, uh, when I didn't have my coach by my side, I always had my teammates, you know, uh, analyze the games with them, you know, always accountability uh, with each other. You know, that's what it's all about, guys. That's how you grow together. That's how you stay strong. You know, that's how you, um, that's, that's how you keep yourself uh, motivated. At least that's, that's what it did with me. It kept me motivated, you know, so um <laughs> so guys i didn't want to be too long um uh, i'm definitely i'm about to eat and everything i know y'all didn't see me post nothing on monday or anything but uh again guys um my week is kind of getting pretty good so i'll definitely be posting like probably twice a day now um hopefully i should be able to um, post twice a day guys and um this morning, y'all did see the speed run. So if you haven't seen that, definitely uh, check that out. Uh, I definitely want to do more live games. Uh, unfortunately, um, when I played against the GM, it wasn't a. I didn't. I didn't record at the time. Uh, I was just playing around while I was teleworking, and I, I didn't even know I was playing a GM. So now I'm gonna just have everything ready, uh, getting ready to record. So any live games I get, I'm gonna just start recording. Even if even if I lose. You know, I'm gonna just still show y'all exactly like what my what I'm thinking, uh, mistakes that I've made, you know, things like that. So uh, I think if I do more of that, then you know, you'll start to see like, oh, okay, that this is this is what he's doing. So I'm trying to help y'all out here, you know what I mean? So it's not just me showing y'all games, but trying to teach y'all how to analyze and you know how to think and things like that. So uh again guys um thanks for all y'all that um, came to the live uh definitely really appreciate it um i don't think this was that long of a live but you know long enough but uh definitely um if you haven't subscribed to my channel definitely subscribe to my channel uh y'all already know if i have any questions that y'all want to um if y'all have any questions for me or anything that y'all want me to post definitely drop a comment below guys and i will give y'all whatever it is that y'all want me to post about you know drop your comments let me know what y'all want me to um upload you know whether live games whether puzzles whether whatever guys because again i'm on this channel because i want to help y'all you know become better you know at the end of the day i want y'all to become better so um and again, if you haven't been in the Maurice Bishop Church University, uh, definitely check that out, guys. Uh, definitely enroll in that. All right. So uh, thank you all for coming and I'll see you all next time. All right, guys. Peace.